so real quick, last thing we're going to do, this this kind of fits with, well, you'll see. Th this fits with similarity. Dilations, uh, it's the last kind of, of transformation we're going to talk about. We talked about, remember last chapter, we talked about three kinds of isometries. Transformations where everything stays the same, right? Where the shape stays the same. Reflections, rotations, translations. When we do that to an object, everything stays the same, but it gets moved, right? Dilations are different. Dilations are when you're going to shrink or enlarge something. A great way to think about this, and to let you kind of visualize this, is imagine a camera where you've got a zoom lens on it, and you're going to zoom in or zoom out. Right? That's exactly what a dilation is. Right? Exactly what a dilation is. So we can skip through some of this stuff. Uh, OK, so. I'm going to go through this pretty quick, and I'll bring these points up when we're looking at some pictures. It's hard, to, I think, to, to learn stuff without being able to stare at a picture. But a couple important points about a dilation. Dilations have a center. Think of the center as the place where you're pointing the lens. That's where the center of the lens is. Now, what do you notice about the center? Now, think back to your experience with a video camera or a zoom lens, any kind of lens. What happens to the center of the lens when you zoom in or zoom out? Does it move? No, that's the one place that stays the same, right? Everything gets bigger or smaller, but it's gonna but that, that's the place where if I was focusing on like an eyeball in the center of the lens, the eyeball is gonna get bigger or smaller and everything else is gonna kinda either uh, grow away from it or shrink towards it, right? But that eyeball that I'm focusing on is gonna be that's gonna stay put, right? Can you agree? Yeah. Okay. So that's like the center of a dilation. <clears throat> that part stays the same. Every other point, and we're going to look at, we're gonna just going to look at simple things like probably, you know, polygons and just triangles. It doesn't need to be anything real complicated. I, I don't think there's, you know, I think I gave you only problems with triangles. So the three vertices of the triangle, what's going to happen to those, though, is they're all going to behave the same way. When we, when we zoom in or zoom out, the amount that they change, meaning if they get twice as far away from the center of the zoom, or they get twice as close, that factor is always going to be the same, and that's called the scale factor. We'll see that in a picture in a second. Okay. Uh, the way we would calculate the scale factor then with the dilation, there's a couple ways we could do it. We're going to find that the images that we create, the triangles, you know, enlarged or reduced, they're going to be similar. And so we can we can always find the scale factor the same way we have been in chapter eight. But there's a new way. We could just compare the distances from points to the center of the zoom or the dilation. Okay, so here's an example. Right, so we're always. I'm going to show you a couple examples here. It's hard to see the primes. There's supposed to be a little prime there and a little prime there. But here's how you keep track. The blue ones will always be the pre-images, and the red will always be the images after the dilation. Right. So with this one here, look what we've done. We've we've uh, we've pointed our zoom lens. Right there, that's the center. C is going to be the center of the zoom, right? Oops. Yeah, this right there. So that's the center. Center's out. There we go. <coughs> so that's the center of the lens. Okay. We started off before we zoomed. That was the triangle we were looking at, and then that's what we ended up with. So did we zoom out or zoom in? Well, we actually zoomed out, didn't we? No, we, we zoomed out because everything got smaller, right? So we could see more, right? So more importantly, because we're really not concerned about cameras here, we're concerned about the dilations and the math. Do you suppose if we started with the blue and ended with the red, is that an enlargement or a reduction? It's a reduction, isn't it, right? Because we started big and we got small. So the distance from the center of the dilation to point P in the pre-image was six, and after the dilation, it became three. So do you suppose then that the scale factor is going to be bigger than one or less than one? It'll be less than one, right? The scale factor is always gonna be the distance from the center to a vertex, you know, to a part of the pre-image compared to the, the distance from the center to the image. So it's always going to end up being C P prime over C P. Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. It should be. So we'll look at one in just a second. Now, what would that be? If this is a reduction, if the number is less than one, and think about it this way. This is the number that we just multiply each of the distances by, right? In other words, all of the, the vertices, all of the points, it doesn't even have to be vertices, but we'll just say it's the vertices. All of the vertices in the image are only one half as far away from the center as they were before we started, you know, with the free image, right? So we multiply them all by one half. So for example, if the distance from C to R was 12, what would C R prime have to be? Have to be six, right? Does that make sense? Okay, here's another one though. Here's another part of this. These are similar triangles, aren't they? All we've done is zoom in or zoom out. We haven't changed the shape at all, just the size, right? So what do you think about this? What if if the distance between P and R was originally 14? What do you think the distance is going to be between P prime and R prime? It's going to be seven. Right? Because the same scale factor, the same scale factor that compares distances from the center of the dilation could also be used to compare the corresponding parts of these similar figures. Right? Make sense? Okay, so we just add another way of looking at a scale factor. Okay? All right. So here's, we go the other way. And here's an enlargement. Right, so now we're starting with the blue. So the distance between C and P in the pre-image is two, but the distance in, they didn't, I just neglected here, but this is supposed to be five. So after the dilation, the distance between C and P prime is five. Enlargement or reduction? Enlargement. So the scale factor's gotta be bigger than one because when we multiply the original distances by the scale factor, they have to get bigger, right? So CP prime over CP is five halves. That means we have two and a half times bigger. Okay? Make sense? Okay. Uh, what do you suppose happens to, let's see. Well, they're, they're the same stuff, right? Same stuff. All we gotta do, if we wanna find the scale factor, we just have to find the ratio of two corresponding parts, right? We have two strategies. We could either compare things like this, right? We could either compare like we've done in the past. We could either compare the ratios of corresponding sides, like we've always done, or with this new stuff, we could compare the distances of corresponding parts from the center. Those count as corresponding parts. Okay, we're going to make things easy, and so we're going to just, you know, in future classes, we can continue with math in future classes, you'll look at some situations where dilations will occur around points other than the origin. But the most convenient place to put dilations is always on the origin, and there's a trick that you'll learn in the future where you can always make it be on the origin, even if it doesn't start there. If it's on the origin, then like we said, really all we're doing is we're just multiplying everything by the scale factor, right? So for example, uh, what if I knew, I don't even need a picture for this. If I knew that these are the four vertices of a rectangle, okay? If I'm going to dilate this about the origin, right? So we're gonna point the camera at the origin, you know, the point zero, zero, and I'm going to do a dilation here with a scale factor of one half, what do you think the coordinates of the vertices would be? So these are, here's A prime, or there's A, B, C, and D. What do you think A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime are gonna be? What do you think the coordinates of A prime would be? If the scale factor is one half, what does that mean? Everything about this is going to get half. We're going to multiply it by one half. We get half of previous before. So the distance from the origin to A, we've got to go over two to the right and up two. So what what's what are going to be what's the recipe going to be for my dilated version? If I scale everything down, what are those coordinates going to be? 
What's going to be the key? It would be 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. That's it. Yeah. It's going to be 1-1 one, one because I'm multiplying by 1 half, right? Yeah. So half of 2 is 1. Half of 2 is 1. Half of 6 is 3. Half of 2 is 1, etc. Right? That's it. So it's no big deal, right? <coughs> what do you think is going to be the case with the perimeter? Now think about the past discussions we've had about perimeters and areas and things, right? Did we talk about just like giant land digging? No. Okay, no. well now it's kind of talking about giant land digging. Oh wait, what is we talking about how the land has to get in? No, no, not that. Yeah. Okay, so so if, if we talk about uh, dilation or similar figures, same thing, right? Dilations just give us similar figures. Uh, we said that the scale factor is the ratio of any uh, any linear measure, anything we can measure with a tape measure, right? So if the scale factor is, let's just say hypothetically that the scale factor is 10. So everything's increasing by a factor of 10, right? Uh, if we were to take something like, for example, let's just start off with a rectangle. And let's say the rectangle is 2 by 1, okay? And I'm going to scale that up by a factor of 10. How big do you think it be? Well, afterwards, we're going to get, uh, it's going to be, I, I'm not going to draw it to scale, but it's going to be a lot bigger. What's the new width going to be? 20. What's the new height going to be? 10. Okay, what's the perimeter of my original shape? Six, right? Two plus one plus two plus one, right? Total of six. Thank you. Oh, okay, that's good. So the perimeter is six. What's my perimeter? Whoops. What's my perimeter going to be here? 20 plus 10 plus 20 plus 10 is 60. Okay, did that obey my scale factor? It did, right? It just increased by 10. No big deal, right? As it should, because that's something I could measure with a tape measure. Okay, let's look at areas. What about areas? <coughs> What's the area of this? Area is 2, right? What's the area of this? What's the area? 200. Whoa. Okay. It got not 10 times 2. How much bigger did it get? It got 100 times 2. Well, now is the same thing here. So for areas, my scale factor was actually 10 squared. That's not an accident. Right? That's always going to be the case. Whatever the original scale factor was, the square of that is what the scale factor for areas is going to be. Okay, let's tweak this just a little bit. Let's make this 3D. Let's say that this was a volume instead of area. Let's say that it had, <coughs> let's say it had a width and a height both of one, right? So I would calculate the volume just by multiplying those dimensions. Everybody agree? Two times one times one. Everybody agree? So the volume would equal two cubic units cubic meters or cubic centimeters or whatever we're measuring it. Same thing up here. Let's try this. What if we make what if we make that distance 10 and that distance 10? So we scaled everything up by 10. Now what's the volume going to be here? 20 times 10 is 200 times 10. So my scale factor for volume was not 10, and it wasn't 10 squared, it was 10 cubed, right? Make sense? Okay, so I hate to, I hate to do this to you, but you're going to ruin some time on me these days. Because like when you watch movies about things like ants that just get huge, or even King Kong or something. It doesn't, the physics doesn't work. Physics doesn't work because 
you know, think about this. If you scale up like an ant, scale up an ant to be, you know, how big are the ants? I mean, big. Let's say that they're, instead of being tiny like that, they're going to be, oh, two meters by 10 meters. So they'll be scaled up by a factor of maybe, look at me a second, make it, make it like a thousand or something like that. So if I scale up an ant by a factor of a thousand, then what's going to happen to its volume? going to be a thousand cubed. Yeah. Well, a thousand cubed, what is that? A thousand cubed. A thousand is just ten cubed, right? Well, ten cubed cubed is ten to the ninth. That's big. Ten to the ninth is a billion. Okay? So, even though I only made that in a thousand times as large as it used to be, its volume is about a billion times bigger. So, what do you suppose happens to its Well, yeah, so is the weight going to be related to its surface area or its length or its volume? It's the volume. The volume, right? The volume is how much stuff the ant contains. If the volume gets a billion times bigger, then that means the weight must increase by a factor of a billion, right? See, that's a problem now. Because the ants, if you look at, like, for example, the ants' legs, if I were to cut through the ants' legs and look at how big the cross-sectional area was. So here's going to be, if I take one of the ant's legs and I just shear it off, and I look at the cross-sectional area of the ant's leg, that's an area. So it only got bigger by a factor of a thousand squared, which is only a million. The cross-sectional area only increased by a factor of a million, but the weight increased by a factor of a billion. And it's the cross-sectional area that determines the ant's ability to support itself. And so eventually it's not going to work because the weight is growing a thousand times faster than the ant's ability to support that weight. So what's going to happen? It's going it's it's to break its own body to shreds its own head. It doesn't work. And if you look at animals, <coughs> you can see, you know, if you kind of look at the spectrum of what animal bodies look like, that they change. It, the bigger an animal is, the more different it looks. You look at the things like spiders or mice or even just tiny spindly little legs because they don't need to have so much structural support for the weight. But if animals get really big, like elephants or for trapeze legs, if you look at dinosaurs, the way dinosaurs were built, I don't know if you've ever like, watched a show where they recreate dinosaurs or something, they had most of their body was legs. I mean, they, like, if you look at a, at a T Rex or something, have these enormous legs and this kind of small body. Right? Why is that? Because it was so massive. It had to have these big supporting legs because its weight was so big. And so animals, you can't just scale up an animal because of that. It doesn't work, right? So the I mean, amazingly enough, the the little bit of geometry we're talking about now is actually what explains why nature looks the way it does, right? Because the scale factors change. The linear distances vary as the volumes change. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think that about about does it. Is there anything else for us to do here? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that that's it for the new stuff. Um, do you want? I'll leave it up to you guys. Do you want to go through? Pretty small class, so maybe not do it again. Do you want to go through like a practice test today? Or do you want to just work? I seriously, I don't. I'm, I love doing this, so I'm happy to do it. But we're getting short on time. It's close. What if people would like to go through a quick, like chapter eight practice test? Would you just raise your hand? <laughs> Some people would rather work. Okay, so that's that's the last thing. We'll go through one. Just the two of us. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go get Chromebooks then. <laughs>